Hey guys, today we're going to talk about web scraping. While working on a project, more often than not, you will come across a time where data has to be extracted from different pages in different locations online. This is the fundamental task of a procedure called web scraping. In this video, we're going to work with this little slideshow called 8 food idioms that are right under your nose. For every slide, we are going to extract the word, the pronunciation, and download audio data of the corresponding pronunciation. For now, we're going to implement everything using Python 2.7, but the same shouldn't be too different for Python 3.5 and above. I'll probably put the code up for the latter as well. So let's get started with first scraping text data. Extracting the heading word and its corresponding pronunciation programmatically requires us to find some pattern that links these eight words. On inspection of this element, we see the enclosing tag is a div with a class called headword. And the enclosing tag for pronunciation is a div with a class prawn. Now let's take a look at the source code and save it as source underscore one dot htm. Notice the similarity between all instances of headword. To get the word, we need the contents of the first anchor tag. To get the pronunciation, we need the text part of the prawn tag. With all this in mind, let's start building our scraper. First, import beautiful soup. Then we create the soup specifying the source HTML and our parser. LXML is a third-party parser used to make sense of HTML tags in Python. One of its most significant advantages is its speed. We want to extract the contents in the headword div class. The findAll function will find every such div and return a list of markups for all the headword classes. The length of this list will be 8 because we have 8 words. In every headword class, we need to extract the word which is in the first and only anchor tag of the div. Find A returns the anchor tag markup with the word, but we only need the text. So we use the dot text property and get rid of the extra spaces with strip. Now our pronunciation is in the neighboring prawn div, also called the next sibling div of the current element, that is the headword div. This div is accessed by the findNextSibling function. In this case, we only need to specify the first argument div. However, in most other situations, you might want to access a particular sibling class that isn't necessarily adjacent to the current element. By specifying the class argument, this function will look for the next sibling div that has a class prawn and will return its markup. Once again, we only require the text within it and not the span tags, so we use the text property. So we have the word and pronunciation. Now let's get the audio source for each word. From the source markup, the mp3 URL is in a source tag, which in turn is nested in an audio tag. Our task is to find a way to reference this text inside the source tag from the head variable that contains the headword markup. There are many ways to do this. For one, we can find all the audio tags in head, then the second source tag in audio. But this seems very roundabout. Instead, we take advantage of beautiful soup's find method to look at nested tags and directly find the source tag, which has the type attribute set to audio slash mpeg. In the code, we specify the same source tag as the first argument and a dictionary of attribute values type as the second. This returns the entire source tag markup, but we only require the URL to the mp3 file. This is in the src attribute. Hence, we use the get function to return the URL alone. Now that we have the URL, we want to retrieve the mp3 file and store it locally. 
Let's create an empty folder called audio that will hold the scraped mp3 files. We name the local file as word.mp3. It's a lot easier than the weird name of these actual files. At this stage, we just write the downloaded data in chunks of 4 kilobytes to the newly created file. On running this code, you can see the word, its pronunciation, audio URL, and local URL for the mp3 files for all eight words. I encourage you to install Pretty Print because it prints complex data structures with the nice indentation and pretty prettily. Yeah. Furthermore, you can see all the audio files were downloaded successfully. Apples. Nutshell. Bananas. Python 3 has the IO package that can do this pretty easily. I'll add it to the GitHub repo along with the code for this video. The link will be down in the description below. Now that you have created this little structured database, you can extract and manipulate this data as and when required for your project. And voila, that's it. Hope you guys liked this little video. If so, check out some other similar videos on the screen. Don't forget to leave a comment on your way out and subscribe for more amazing videos. Bye bye.